Right, Shalom, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, as always, I want to give all the praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Wahara Kakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles, chiefly those of Great Millstone, and other like minded elders in Israel that do teach well, by whom I learned this truth through the power and spirit of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Shalom, Mabarakyam, unto the whole for the elect, your brothers and sisters scattered throughout the four corners, doing your due diligence in all truth and sincerity. And salutation to the Akia, man, laboring week in, week out in the highways and the hedges, giving up their body as a living sacrifice unto Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, in all truth and sincerity. Now, Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, which means He is or He exists. And Yahweh Shai is the name of who the world ignorantly called Jesus Christ, which means He saves or He delivers, right? It's the brother Daniela. Back with a real quick lesson, man. This is literally gonna be a real quick lesson in the spirit. And Lord willing, it is uh, edifying in some way, shape, or form. Let me get straight into it, right? This is first Peter chapter four, verse eleven. It says, If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Yahweh Bashim Shai. If any man minister, let him do it to the ability which the Heavenly Father have given uh, the Heavenly Father giveth. That the Most High in all things may be glorified through Hamashiach Yahweh Shai, to whom be praise and dominion forever and, and ever. Amen. Right. Let me read that again, First Peter 4 and 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai. And if any man minister, let him do it as, as, do it as of the ability which the Heavenly Father giveth. That the Heavenly Father in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shai Hamashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever are man, right? This is Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20. It says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, right? To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, right? And these two precepts, the reason I brought these out, is a perfect example of why the Heavenly Father told us not to lean on our own understanding, right? And this lesson, what I want to speak about is um, is the fact that whatever we do concerning the word of Yahweh Hashem right? It has to, uh, what should I say? Whenever we're bringing out some edification or you know, we we we're using the wisdom and the understanding we're using. You know, it has to be biblical, man. You know, it has to be biblical. And when I say that, I say that to say, you know, we may believe something, right, or perceive something outside of what we've been given, right? Which is the hundred percent truth, I believe, right? And when I say that, I mean to the extent that everything the Heavenly Father, Bahashim Yahawashai, have wanted to, us to know, He have given us. Right, and we know all things haven't been revealed unto us yet, right? And we know what we are uh, that we are. Uh, well, Salakia, it says the scripture says that we know in part and we prophesy in part, right? That that shows you alone that we don't know everything yet, right? But once we're in the kingdom, all will be revealed, right? But until then, we've been given everything we need to know right now, which is still the hundred percent of what we need to know, right? So again, we may believe something or perceive something outside of what is written, right? But what we can't do, right? What we can't do is try to make that gospel or make that fact, especially if we can't prove it via scripture, right? So let me say that again. You may perceive something or believe something outside of the word of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, right? Now, if we can't back that up and prove it biblically, that that is actual fact, then we shouldn't be making it gospel and we shouldn't be trying to make it doctrine. That's my point, right? A good example. Um, the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, right? Starting from the uh, Apostle Taha on down. I believe back in the uh, you know, One West days, they made a, a oath, right? Or a pact between themselves, uh, you know, stating that, uh, that King Marsha was King David back in the reincarnation or the regeneration, right? Now, this was something they 
that they believe to this day and this is something they perceive, right? Which they, they may well be right. But what the what the apostles don't do, what the elders don't do, is that they don't push that as doctrine, right? I've heard the apostle Taha and the apostle uh, Gabar and Ramlob say that many times, right? That this is something we believe that you don't necessarily have to believe it, and the reason you don't have to believe it is because it's not scriptural, in a sense, as it doesn't actually say that King Masha is King David. Right? We know that the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets, so we know that they're back on the earth today. But none of us know who those men are. And when I say that, I say none of us know, right? So we may believe and we may perceive, right? Which is, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. But what we can't do, I say what we can't do is try to make that uh, doctrinal, right? Or gospel, right? And this is what we see a lot. Uh, well, personally, I see a lot of this guy on right now. Especially when it comes to things like, in, I say this this year alone or within the last year, I've probably heard about eight or nine, eight, nine, ten different self-proclaimed King David, right? And there's probably more popping out the woodwork as we speak, right? About eight, nine self-proclaimed King David. Then you've got other brothers that are, 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 are saying that they know who they are in the regeneration today, right? Which is fine again. You know, you may believe that. Right, you may perceive that, right? You you may be right in due time, who knows? But guess what? You also may be wrong in due time. And the reason I say that is because we don't know what he actually knows, and that's the point. So this is why we can't push any of these things as doctrine or as scriptural or as gospel. We've got to keep that in our minds, man. You know. Because remember, we got a job to do, which is to feed the flock. And what we don't want to be doing is speaking on things uh without our measure, man. Speaking on things we don't know of yet, right? That's why they brought the two precepts out that I bring out. You got men out here talking about, you know, they know they're uh, King David. You got men out here talking about they know that they're uh, they're one of the twelve back, you know, in the regeneration. Then when you ask them which one they are, they don't know. Best thing to do is just leave all of that stuff alone right now, man, and continue to plow, continue to do the work, continue to keep the faith. In your how about shimmy out shy? These are the most important things. And repent, man. You trying to force everybody to believe that you're this person or that person, the regeneration, you know, it, it, it could it could actually hinder your chances of getting salvation. How about that? Because these are not things that we're meant to not meant to be really concentrating on right now. That's exactly why it reads in the um, the book of Ecclesiastes. I can't exactly remember where it is, but it talks about there being no remembrance of the former things, right? And there's a reason the Heavenly Father did that. There's a, a perfect reason why the Heavenly Father made sure that there's no remembrance of the former things, especially when it comes to things like regeneration, who we are back today in, in the regeneration. Again, we know the spirit of the prophets is subject to the prophets, but there's a reason, a perfect reason the Heavenly Father didn't let any of us know who we are today, you know? you got to think of the things that could happen if we did. We might get proud. We might think, oh, well, I don't have to do the work anymore. So on and so forth. And it's a beautiful thing the Heavenly Father didn't let us know for sure who we are back in a uh, regeneration today. Right? So again, I want to make that clear. There's nothing wrong with you believing or perceiving, right? You may be wrong. You may be right in due time. But what we can't do is try to make that uh, gospel or make that doctrine. That's very dangerous, man, you know. So, yeah, that's pretty much the gist of the lesson. Uh, I'm going to read this quickly again. This is Isaiah 8 and 20. It says, To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them, right? I think even, if I'm not mistaken, even Paul at times said that when he spoke some of what he spoke, he said that I speak this as a man, you know, showing you what, differentiating what was actually uh, gospel and what was his opinion that yeah actually may have matched up with the uh, with the doctrine but was letting you know that was this was just his opinion man right first peter 4 and 11 if any man speak let him speak as the oracles of the heavenly father and if any man minister let him do it as as of to like let him do it as of the ability which the heavenly father giveth that the heavenly Father in all things may be glorified through Yahweh Shai HaMashiach, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 
So, you know, Lord willing, this uh, quick lesson was edifying through the spirit, man. Until the next one, I want to give all praises, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh. Baha Sham, Yahweh Shai, Waharaka Kodash, Rakatha Yahweh, Rakatha Yahweh Shai, Kohalo Yim La, Abanawa Yahweh, Allah Hayanawa, Baha Sham, Hamashiach Malak Yahweh Shai, Waharaka Kodash, and Shalom to the elect.